Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm excited for this one. We're diving into a single barrel. This is from Starlight Distillery. Okay, this is their Amberana Finish uh, Cigar Batch, right? So this has been making the rounds lately. People have been snatching this up. Amberana Finish is like all the rage right now. It's kind of like the new thing. Okay, uh, you know, finishing in different kinds of barrels has been popular for a while now, and that's one of the best ways people can make a, a product really distinctive and, and make it stand out against its competitors. And uh, now Brazilian wood, right? Brazilian and Barana finished wood. Uh, this is kind of like the thing, and people are starting to call these, they're calling them like uh, breakfast barrels because Embarana kind of gives these uh, cinnamon and maple and allspice kind of notes, right? So that's kind of the, the reputation that it's, that it's deserved, that it's earned. And uh, this is from Starlight. I've had a number of Starlight products before. I really like their uh, double oaked, uh, you know, toasted barrel double oaked. Uh, barrel that they, uh, the, their, those barrel picks were making the rounds, I think it was late last year or maybe early this year. Uh, either way, that was really good. So I've had some of their stuff, it's been, it's, I've never been disappointed by a Starlight bottle so far. So I didn't actually pick up the uh, Amberana finished barrel myself, uh, that bottle myself. A buddy of mine did and he sent me a sample of it, he actually sent me a couple samples of it. He's like, I like it enough that I think you're going to want more than one. <laughs> Which on paper, I'm intrigued by, I think the combination of having a rye whiskey in the uh, Emberana breakfast barrel, I like that idea. Boom. Let's crack it open. And let's see if the uh, Emberana is worth all the hype that it has been receiving. If you're interested in what different kinds of oak barrels add, oh my gosh, I just licked my finger and immediately got a note. Because I like... I like ran it on the rim of this little sample bottle after pouring it, gave it a quick lick, and my brain immediately hopped to a specific tasting note. I'm gonna give you that note. It was cinnamon applesauce. Like, like fresh made cinnamon applesauce in the fall. That's funny. That's kind of funny that my brain jumped there on a lick, but we'll see if that holds up. But anyways, uh, if you're interested in what different kinds of wood, different kinds of oak uh, add to the flavor of a whiskey, I do have a video that unpacks the barrel contribution to flavor profile. So uh, I've done a lot of reading on, you know, like Lou Bryson, one of my favorite whiskey writers, uh, has a whole book that he talks about different um, components along the way, different variables along the way in making whiskey and how they add flavor. And, and one of my favorite chapters in that is the uh, the chapter on the oak itself, the barrel. So uh, give that that video I did uh, a watch. Maybe I'll put a link to it at the end of the, an, end of this video, maybe in the uh, description as well. Oh my gosh, it is spot on. It smells like cinnamon applesauce in the fall. Like, if I close my eyes and I smell this, I'm at an orchard, the leaves have already changed colors. I'm sitting at a wooden table outside like a cidery or something at the orchard. Fresh made cinnamon applesauce in front of me. Or even apple pie, I could totally get apple pie off this. Holy cow, the, the nose on this, I could just smell this all day. You know, a lot of stuff out there just smells like a dozen other bourbons or a dozen other ryes that you've had. You're like, oh, I get vanilla and caramel and butterscotch off this. Yeah. All the typical stuff. Not that that's bad. I mean, it's tried and it's true and it's delicious, but sometimes it's nice to have a nose that is just so radically different that it, it leaves an impression. And this sure leaves an impression. Like, I kind of don't want to <laughs> stop smelling it. Oh, I should note that the proof on this is 113.7. Okay, 113.7. So it's up there. The actual oak notes that get under the nose are really subtle. Let's go in on it. Right up front on the palate is more of this, the cinnamon side of things. You get a little bit of that, that allspice, that cinnamon right up front. And then it, trans it starts to transition a little bit more to the, the sweeter side as well. But that Amberana, you get this like, it's almost like oak mixed with warehouse funk. Kind of right there in the tail end of the palette, transitioning into the finish. And then the finish is all for me like apple strudel. You know what I'm saying? It just tastes like apple strudel with the cinnamon in there and that apple pie filling, that sweet gooey stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it's got a little bit of a savory note like your pie crust in there as well. On second sip, I'm getting a little bit more of the apple side or like a yellow fruit note that you get with you know, a well-matured rye. Not a, not a young rye that was just in the barrel for like, you know, two to four years. 
something that's more like in the four to eight range as that spice that peppercorn mellows out i'm not like not getting any peppercorn on this at all which is surprising because i think i think this one is like i think it's actually aged between four and five years and then the finish beyond that so i think it's between the four and five year mark so the fact that it's mellowed out that much in just that little amount of time i think it's pretty impressive but the finish on this thing is like it's so delightful it's so unique and I think that that has, that's got to be the Amarana. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of buzz around Amarana lately. And uh, you always wonder, you always wonder, is it like a trendy thing? Is it, is it really different? Is it, does it really earn a reputation or is it just the new thing? You know what I mean? A fad. I think Amarana earns a seat at the table. Like this is exceptional. And I totally get why people call it the breakfast barrel. You know what I mean? That cinnamon, a little bit of that maple sweetness. You know, I'm getting things like apple pie and apple strudel with that cinnamon note in there. What a cool drink. I have to admit that this is probably one of the most interesting, like not just interesting, but also enjoyable. That combination, cause some, cause some stuff I've had lately has been like really interesting, but it's not something I'd be like, you know, I would really love to have a full bottle of this or I'll refill this bottle when I'm done with it. I think of like um, the Westland single cask that I tried on the channel lately or recently. That was that uh, French Jurand Somme finish. And that was really interesting, but it wasn't something that I'd be like, ah, oh, I can't wait to have some more of that or need another bottle of that. This is a combination of being unique and interesting, but also being good enough that you're like, no, I really want to have more. <laughs> I really want to have more of that. Now, I do believe we got to rate this. Let me pull up my scale here. And on my scale, like, there is room for whiskeys that are just like, really good at being what they are. You know, they don't do anything crazy or innovative, but they just deliver on what makes a good bourbon, or what makes a good rum. You know what I mean? There's room for those things to excel. But on my scale, I really tend to appreciate when something does that. It does, che checks all the right boxes for whatever its base version is. Bourbon, rye, scotch, Irish, whatever it is. But then it also does something that pushes those boundaries a little bit more and is a little bit more creative, a little bit more innovative. That's what's going to earn you points above and beyond just being great on my scale. And it's going to take you into the ranges of being phenomenal. You know what I mean? And I think this, this all, hits all the right notes for being a good ride. But then it takes it a step further and it says, let's be innovative. Let's add some really unique flavor profiles in here with this Amberana finish. Then it takes it into new territories. And I, especially with us coming into the fall season, like I feel like this is like the perfect bottle <laughs> for that you know what i mean so because of that i think i'm gonna rate this this is gonna be one of the highest ratings i've given a whiskey on my channel so far i think i'm gonna give this an 8.8 .8. that's really high for me like i don't hand out i've never handed out a nine to anything on my channel yet we've come close i've had a couple of uh a couple of bottles that have really blown me away and have come close i've never handed out a nine yet this gets real close this is what i love about stuff like this is this is a distillery that is starting to really earn a reputation right but they are not those guys out there that have $2,000 bottles on the shelf, that you're trying to win a lottery to, to, to get a bottle of something, you know, that's been in their warehouse for 12 plus years. Those bottles are cool, don't get me wrong, but they're once in a lifetime bottles. This is something that anybody can experience, but it's also phenomenal. I'm really gonna enjoy this. And the next time I see Starlight put a bottle of that up for sale, I'm gonna jump on it. That is absolutely fantastic, and I think that you should have it. I think that you should try it. <laughs> Thanks, Matt, for sharing. I appreciate it, brother. I'll be sure to share some with my buddy who's coming over this weekend, actually. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the reason that I'm able to purchase a lot of the bottles that I review. Like I just said, that Wild Turkey 12 year, never would have bought that on my own because my wife would have been like, um, I just noticed that 200 bucks went out of our account um, for whiskey. Do you want to do you want to explain that? Uh, because I'm going to give you one shot at convincing me it was worth it, and then you're going to pack your bags. <laughs> so thank you so much, Patreon supporters, for the generosity so that I can afford to you know, pick up some of these more interesting bottles and review them on the channel. I appreciate it. Cheers, my friends. May you live virtually and get better with age. Bye-bye.